For this video, let's go ahead and take a look at number six functions. So do double click the functions.playground and this will launch Xcode for us. All right, it's time to get dressed. I don't know why you're not dressed yet, but if you want to read through this, basically what this is saying is this expression, get dressed, describes a series of actions, but there's a lot that goes into it. For example, what are you going to wear? How do you, where do you get the clothes? Are they clean? Do they stand up on a corner by themselves? That type of thing. So get dressed sounds like a simple thing, but it's actually uh, a phrase that describes a number of actions. So this idea of taking something that's very complex and is defining a simpler way, it's called abstraction. So abstraction is something we do a lot in software development. So uh, they're saying, hey, think about some other ideas, simple phrases that represent much more complicated activities. So what we're going to talk about are functions, which is a way to define some abstraction in code. All right, let's talk about calling a function. Now, guess what? You have already been using a function. You didn't even know it. Notice the print with the open and closing parentheses. When you did this print hello world, that's a function. So when you use it, you are calling the function. So just as you uh, do things, a lot of stuff happens when you print. So when you run this function, it's going to turn uh, things into a string. It's going to add a new line character at the end, and then it's going to show up in the console right down here. So this is a function that is built in. And now the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to practice some functions and defining our own. All right, let's click next, repeating yourself. Okay, so now we've looked at a lot of things. Each page, there's code that runs from top to bottom, and then you see the results on the side. Uh, we've also printed to the console. Now, this has a lot of code. Notice here, I want to show you. And so you've printed a whole bunch of stuff. So notice here, it says, there are two things programmers try to avoid, repeating themselves and <laughs> repeating themselves. So writing the same code more than once gives you more things to write. So let's, let's just, how can we figure out how many lines are repeated and what can we do to fix that? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, you can rack up, wrap up code that you want to use more than once in a function. So it says this function contains multiple lines of code. It's a little different. So notice here. The name of the function is row the boat. And then notice how it uses a uh, the opening closing parentheses. Those are important. And then you have what we call a brace. I Sometimes they call them a curly brace. And so this is open curly brace and a closed curly brace or just open and closed brace. Within here, this is what we call the body of the function. Now notice how you have everything that's written here, nothing's showing up on the side. And that's because when you define a function, nothing happens until you call that function. So here we've declared the function, we've defined it in code, but we haven't called it. In other words, you can write all of these lines of uh, code that have to be uh, run in order. You can put them in a function and then you can call this function multiple times. So let's run that and let's uncomment. Now here's a shortcut. If you press command and then the uh, forward slash, it will remove the comment. If Again, if you press command forward slash, it adds a comment. So there's a shortcut here for you if you haven't learned that already. Now, when you run a call function, you'll see it on the sidebar. And because now that is being run, it shows up on the sidebar, but it also shows up in the console because that's we're using the print command. Okay, it says write your own function that prints something, then call your new function. Pay attention so you know where all the parentheses and braces should go. What happens if you call your function more than once? All right, let's write a function. 
Notice here, I want to call the attention that, notice it uses a keyword, funk, F-U-N-C, because it's fun, see? Anyway, I'll hold the jokes for later. Okay, so define, to declare a function, we say F-U-N-C, space, and then we give it a name. So, we're going to say, uh, what do we want to call it? Let's call it um, happy birthday. And then we have, whoops, we have two, an open and closing parenthesis, then a space, and then a curly brace. And if I press return, notice what happened. When I, when I pressed return, it filled it in for me because it knew, well, I'm going to delete that. I want to show you again. When I, when I create the open brace and then I press return, it automatically completed it for me. That's one of the other features that's nice about this. Okay, so now let's say print happy birthday, comma, and then print happy birthday, comma, and then let's say happy, and I'm just going to do autocomplete and press return. And it says, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Awesome. All right. Now let's talk more about how we can divide up tasks. Breaking it down. So the verse of the nursery rhyme has a pattern. First two lines are the same. The next two lines change, and then you take a breath between verses. So when we have a long list of tasks, then we want to break this down into multiple smaller lists. This is called decomposition. Ooh, big words. Decomposition. That means we're taking a longer list and making it into smaller. So we can split this into row the boat. So row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. And then merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And then breathe. We print, print. Now we can use these functions to print the verse and the start of the second verse like this. So we say row the boat and then merrily dream and then row the, and row the boat. And what it looks like is this. So it's repeated. See how it's repeated this phrase for us because we broke it down into different functions and then we call the functions and we repeat this function and that gives us the rhyme. Awesome. Write a function called crocodile scream for the second two lines of the second verse, call it to complete the song in the console. Um, crocodile scream. <laughs> I don't know what this, what is the second verse? There's a second verse. What in the world? I had no idea there was a second verse. Write a function called crocodile scream for the second two lines of the second verse and call it to complete the song in the console. I have never heard that in my life. Okay. <laughs> I must have had a, I don't know, maybe I had, I was deprived as a child. I don't recall ever a second verse, but good old Google told me what it was. So let's write a function called crocodile scream. Wait, crocodile scream, which says print if you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Okay. I won't forget. <laughs> I'm going to go up here. Notice how I have this other one. So let's go ahead and write this. Now, let's say row, row, row your boat. And then we're going to say crocodile. Oh, 
Oh, it doesn't like it because I called the method before I wrote it. I'm just going to copy this here. And then I'm going to call it right here. And there we go. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. All right, I will never forget to scream, believe me. Okay, let's check out functions within functions. So when you declare a function, you're putting groups of lines of code together and you're giving that name, or that group a name. Now, here is another way of writing it. You have this first function and a second function, but then you say verse one, which you call which calls the other function so what you're doing is calling another function from within this function all right so here's a function for an alternate second verse of the song using the laughing submarine ha ha fooled you all i'm a submarine all right so the function for verse two is funk uh verse two and then we're gonna say row the boat and then merrily whoops sorry that's not what I meant I meant to say row the boat and then laughing submarine now let's call that new function verse 2 awesome I fooled you all. I am a submarine. The things you learn. The things you learn. All right. Next, let's talk about infinite loops. This is about something that can go wrong. Sometimes we make a mistake and we call the function from within itself. And when it calls itself, it calls itself and itself itself. So we repeat, repeat, and the next thing you know, it's an infinite loop. It's not really infinite because what's going to happen is the app is going to say, hey, what's going on, and then stop. It says, make an infinite loop in the code above by editing verse 1, so it calls verse 1 after it calls Merrily Dream. Look at the console and sidebar. Okay, verse 1, and then it's going to call verse 1. All right, let's see what happens. Oh boy, look at this console's going crazy oh my goodness it's called it a lot <laughs> it might take a while let's remove that line to make it stop make it stop make it stop wow okay now let's take a look at why we use functions So obviously printing nursery rhymes is not that big of a deal, but uh, when you're using an app, you're not, you know, you're not looking at every single line of code. You, you often just look at the functions uh, that you're calling. And it says you call a function knowing what it does, but not necessarily how it does it. For example, here we've got all the song functions. Um, and so you've got this here. If you move the lines around, notice how this is um, you've got the setup but see um, let's see if I move this around and I put this here at the top then it changes up changes up the methods but see I'm not seeing what those functions are so the reason we have we call the functions is so that uh, we we know what happens we don't have to worry about how it happens all right let's change talk about change something once so when you have things in a function then it makes it easier to change your code because it's all in one place and you know where to do that because you know what the, the function is so for example here's some other parts of that some other repeats so it says, it's been decided the rhyme shouldn't be about boats anymore. Update the print statements in Row the Boat 
So the song follows the same pattern, but is about something else. So it's verb, 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 your noun, la, 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 rhyme. For example, ride, ride, ride your bike with your cycling team. You have to update two lines of code, but the changes will be in effect everywhere the function is called. So again, this is a value of the reason we put code within functions is so that we can call the same code multiple places, but if we make a change, I don't have to make a change everywhere I've called the function because it's only in one location. So let's change this. Uh, let's say type, type, type your code. Uh, what should it be? Type, type, type your code for everyone to see. Awesome. Type, type, type your code for everyone you see. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. <laughs> All right. Very good. So what we've seen is that we use functions to group code together so that you can take complicated things and perform with one line of code. Um, you can write it to write code. It helps to combine things that should be happening in a certain order and allows you to break things up into smaller pieces. So that's what we talk about when we say abstraction. All right, very good. In the next video, we'll look at these examples.